Mm. So just uh, noticing uh, some new faces who are just joining us for this session. I won't uh, name, <laughs> but uh, just to give a warm welcome. So uh, just checking in the uh, Shrine Room in the Lotus Hall, if anyone notices that um, uh, someone who was sitting next to them isn't back yet. The, uh, most of the families group have gone into the Vajra Hall, so um, the young people and children and parents uh, will be engaging with their chanting. <laughs> So I think this this may be us. <laughs> so this is a, a beautiful example of cooperation of uh, energies with uh, people bringing uh, other people cuppers and water. So I think this is um, us now. Um, so um, um, for the next um, session, we're uh, going to be led by Buddha Sevaka. And Buddha Sevaka has, um, uh, has uh, I think, <laughs> is going to offer us a, a beautiful gratitude um, meditation. So um, I won't say um, anything more, uh, Buddha Sevaka, and just hand over to you. Thank okay. You. Thank you. You such a meaning. Can everyone on Zoom hear okay? Do I have to speak right into the mic? Can you hear me now? I have to speak into the mic. What's that? Oh, yeah. There's some people coming in. Hi. Steve, is there anyone else to come in? Oh, yeah. I think I'll just get started and she can come in uh, when she's tidied up. So, hi everyone. I'm Buddha Sevika, as Satyamuni just said. I'm going to do a gratitude meditation. I have to speak right into the mic, don't I? All oh, right. Can Zoomies hear me now? Oh, yeah. Right, good. Um, I right, let's just get going. So, if you just uh lower your gaze or shut your eyes, depending on what feels comfortable for you, so just coming into a relationship with the surface on which you sit in. So you can probably feel that on the backs of your thighs, if you're sitting on a chair or in your sitting bones if you want a cushion, and your knees if you want a cushion to the floor, or your feet on the floor if you're on a chair. So just giving your weight up to the surface, just melting into the surface, not holding any tension anywhere. So we're just going to take a breath, maybe a couple of deep breaths before we get going. And then we're going to take what I call the energetic breath from uh, deep within the earth, which goes up through our central channel and then up through the top of our head. That will then align our spine 
not make us too slouchy or too bolt upright. Just somewhere in between. So just take a few earth breaths. So we've had some input this morning, which was lovely. We're just going to become quiet now, quieter. So we're just taking attention away from our thinking minds into our embodied experience. So we're just going to do a brief body scan meditation from the head to the feet, which will allow us to inhabit our body more fully. So just becoming aware of the tactile sensations of the head. Not the thinking mind, but the actual tactile head. So just feeling the roots of your hair, just, just pure um, attention on that area. So just inhabiting every place I mention, moving down to the eyebrows and the space between the eyebrows. Just let the skin here be soft. And then we've probably got, probably say a few funny things because I'm quite into embodied meditation, so... We've probably got hard eyeballs, if you can imagine such a thing, from either looking into the camera on Zoom or looking out for people in the centre. So we want to soften the eyeballs. So to do this, just bring some attention to the temples on either side of the head. So imagine that dimple is just growing. And the eyeballs are just softening or shrinking. And sometimes I even imagine they're slipping behind the cheekbones, as weird as that sounds. So we're just looking inwards now. I've also uh, had it that... Imagine there's a telly, a TV screen at the back of your head and you're watching it. So just to internalize your, your awareness now. So now just moving down to the area where guys grow a moustache. So just letting the skin fall to the left and fall to the right of the mouth. Just having a soft awareness of this area. Now we're becoming aware of the jaw, the lips and the tongue. Again, letting these areas be soft. People hold tension in the tongue, which is, again, it's funny to think about, but I feel tension sometimes in the back of my tongue. So see if you can let your tongue be soft and flat in your bottom part. <clears throat> Here's another funny thing, but see if you can become aware of your gums in the mouth. See if you can notice any tension there. And with uh, every instruction, um, the very fact that I've mentioned it, you'll then release the tension in the gums, which is where I hold tension. So just moving down now to the shoulders, sweeping across each shoulder, letting your shoulders drop. And imagine the shoulder joints are opening or open. And there's a waterfall coming out of your shoulder joint. 
And so your limb, your arm is very fluid, soft like water. And then they collect at the, uh, the fizzy sensations in your hands. So this is a, this is something that really activates my imagination, which is what the day's so far been about. So just sitting with the, um, the fluid sensations in the arms, busy sensations in the hands. Maybe your hands are supported on your knee or on the cushion. And so now we're just moving our attention to the neck, the back of the neck, where the uh, the neck joins the base of the skull, the atlas joint here, which is again an area where people can hold tension. So I'm just giving that some space. Maybe having your chin slightly tucked in so it allows that area to breathe. So now just noticing the rise and the fall of the chest with the breath. You maybe feel the echo of the breath in the in the belly if you're not holding tension in your belly. So try not to tuck your toe in. Just let it all go. So like you see a baby when it's very young. It's belly going up and down. Maybe you can feel your belly going up and down. So now moving your attention to your back, your back lungs and your back chest. If you're sitting on a chair, feeling the contact of the chair in the back lungs. It's really, it's really relaxing. So maybe if you're on a cushion, just having a, an awareness of the back and the touch, touch of the clothes on your skin. And so however you're sitting, you'll feel the sitting bones on the uh, the cushion or the chair seat. So I'm just giving you weight up to the surface. Letting the upper body be held. It doesn't need to tense against gravity. It can just be held. Solid, solid like a mountain. So now with the pelvic joints, try doing the same thing as you did for the shoulders. So I always imagine the pelvic joints are opening and the, the limbs, the legs are falling like water out of these joints and then collecting at the fizzy pulls of your feet. So you're perfectly still, perfectly held. And it's a pre perfect preparation for the gratitude meditation, the Katanya Bhavna. So this meditation is, is a bit like the Metta Bhavna, really. So the first stage, the first stage is just checking yourself, being thankful for all the 
for your senses, for your six senses in Buddhism. Your sight, your audible sense, your taste, touch, mind, smell. Let's see if you can just tune into anything that you're feeling, anything that you're thinking. I'll try not to get lost in your thoughts or just notice from a distance. Maybe you can hear the sounds of the city outside. Maybe you can feel cool air on your skin. Just feeling whatever's present. And just be thankful that we've got this opportunity to practice with our direct experience. If you feel any areas of residual tension, just uh, just letting that go again with your breath. Just letting the hands be soft. Don't worry if you get caught up in stories, just check yourself and then come back when you notice. Don't judge yourself harshly. So just sensing directly and being thankful for what we hear, feel, etc. how rich our lives are due to having these sense impressions. We saw that performance before, we enjoyed it with our eyes, we enjoyed it with our ears, Just bringing some gratitude to your own body for experiencing that. Second stage of the practice, we're bringing to mind a teacher, someone that we've learned from. So I sometimes bring to mind the refuge tree, and the tree is a very much a part of our day, and so the refuge tree for me 
includes Sangrach to a teacher, his teacher Dada Rinpoche, all the way up to Pamas Hambava at the top or near the top. So you could bring to mind your study group leader, your your college tutor, someone that's just taught you taught your stuff so you can just enjoy what what you've learned. Also on the refuge tree, of course, we've got the Dharma texts and the Buddha realized that he had no one on earth to reverence, so he reverenced the Dharma. That was his teacher. So reverencing the Dharma. Reverencing the refuge tree altogether. Reverencing your teacher, maybe your preceptor. So you maybe feel that reverence in your heart, and I certainly do. Our sensor. Just pure gratitude for your beloved teacher. Just checking your body, see if you're still being held. You're not holding against gravity, you're being held by the cushion the chair. Speaking for myself, my kids have been a great teacher. Taught me patience, kashanti, forbearance. They've also taught me how to love unconditionally. That makes my heart open. If you can feel it in your heart center, slightly different feeling than the meta practice in my experience. Just feeling the gratitude for your teacher. Maybe a school teacher if you if you're young. So you how to read and write.
See if you can just sit with the positive emotion in your heart center just by bringing your teacher to mind and heart. Just checking your body, your body's still soft. And where's your mind? Is your mind still in meditation? The next stage <clears throat> is to be grateful for, well, I call it the services. And this points to interconnectedness. So how we're not alone, how everything that we do, everything that we, all our activities, have been made possible by millions or thousands of people. So you can go, go and get a brew downstairs and there's people that have made the coffee, people that have made the cups, people that have made the kitchen, people that have made the building. You can just go to the nth degree with this. So just having gratitude for the conditions which are favorable, which enable us to be here. So there's any amount of people that their work allows you to enjoy your leisure time, your spare time here at the Manchester Buddha Center. If you've got a really wild imagination, you can imagine this place before the center was here. So maybe there were trees, hills, water. You know, you can just really go for it with this stage, I think. And then the uh, the mill owners or whatever the, you know, the warehouse people made a warehouse. And that's how this place sprung up. And so they worked hard to shape the bricks. Again, like I say, you can go go really mad with this stage. Just pointing out the truth of interconnectedness. You know, we're not alone. We're part of a great big web network. So just being thankful for that network.
It's interesting that um, chitter is heart mind. When I bring stuff to mind, it also goes into my heart. Just having these uh, thoughts about interconnectedness, feeling the warmth in your body. Just as the meditation progresses, you may be becoming a bit more still, a bit more relaxed, enjoying the fruits of the practice. Just keeping on bringing to mind the services. And how thankful that we are. For well, this next stage <laughs> is a difficult person stage. So being thankful for the difficult person, for what they've brought to you, you know, you might have had an altercation, difficult communication, so you can be thankful that um, you've handled that well. You practiced Kishanti Padmita, patience, forbearance, made you more resilient and just bringing someone to mind who you've had a little bit of difficulty with and how it's positively affected you. So being thankful for that. You know, this person may have made you into the person that you are today. Just enjoying the stillness. Whilst also just bringing your mind and your heart to the difficult person again and again if you get, if you get sidetracked.
of course, just relaxing your body, releasing any tension. We're going quieter and quieter and stiller and stiller. Our heart is opening and opening. this stage, I'm going to bring this Sangha in on Sangha Day. So just being thankful for all those brothers and sisters that you tread the path with. They support you. You support them, but it's it's very good having the Sangha around if you want to make any progress. So we're thankful to the Sangha. And actually we're thankful to the uh to the to our experience of nature, you know, like the hills and the trees, the expansiveness. I was walking yesterday on the top, so my heart was open. So let's see. Let's see what just bring into mind that natural world and that Sangha connection to see if you can really feel that in your heart. Maybe even think about the mandala walk, uh, Sangha and the natural world were brought together. Again, just softening your body. If you notice an areas of tension. <clears throat> so can you not hold in anywhere?
it'd be bringing attention to your to your belly, to your soft belly, as it rises and falls with the breath. There's an area between the navel and the pelvic floor called the hara. They could even dwell in that point for a bit. Get yourself really grounded. The human body, at peace with itself, is more precious than the rarest gem. Cherish your body, it is yours this one time only. The human form is one with difficulty. It's not easy to, it's easy to lose. All worldly things are brief, like lightning in the sky. This life you must know, as a tiny splash of a raindrop, a thing of beauty that disappears even as it comes into being. Therefore set your goal and make use of every day and night to achieve it. They're just now entering a period of it just sitting. So I'll just drop in the effort that you made in the previous stages. Just sitting with a fruits who practice. Perfectly still. How are you feeling now? Are you feeling positive? Grateful for everything. Just sitting on for two more minutes, after which time I'll ring the final bell.
at which time just bring yourself out of the meditation in your own way. Of course, you're welcome to sit on if you'd like. Thank mm -hmm. you. 